Um, so I guess my first question um, regarding the new woman is, uh, can you talk a little bit of how the genesis of the film came about? Because I actually wasn't too familiar with, with you know, her story myself. Well, no one is or yeah. was. Um, the genesis of the film is about seven years ago, my husband, boyfriend at the time, was in CVS uh, picking up a prescription. This sounds like a non sequitur, but it's, <laughs> it has a point. Um, picking up a prescription, and he was waiting at the counter, and there was an article that was photocopied. And he picked up the article and read it, and it was about Annie Kopchowski. And he called me at work and said, hey, I just heard this cool story and told me about it. So I Googled it, and the only thing I found on the Internet was that article. Nothing else, no mention of her literally anywhere. And I found that to be pretty remarkable considering how amazing her story was and that there was no mention of her at all. So I, I work in the industry, so I thought, you know, this would make a great story, and clearly it hasn't been done, so I contacted the author of the article. His name is Peter Zeitlin, and I found out that he was in the process of writing a book on her. So one thing led to another fairly quickly. I optioned his manuscript, now the book, which basically gave me the rights to use his material. I didn't need permission to do a film on Annie, but this allowed me to use all of his research, which was invaluable because he completely resurrected her story from nothing. Like She had been very famous in her time, but very quickly was lost. Her story was completely lost to history. And he was the one who, after having heard about this famous relative of his, I don't know if I mentioned it, she was his, or he is her great-grandnephew. And after hearing about her story, he was the one who called librarians around the world and research newspapers around the world to figure out her story and piece it back together. And everything that we know about her story is pretty much solely from newspapers. Literally, there's only one person alive today who even knew her. It's her granddaughter, who's um, early 80s, I think now. I interviewed her for the film, but she didn't know much about the story. She could speak more to Andy's character. But so Peter completely resurrected the journey, and so I, once I spoke to him and found out more about her character and all the details I was I was pretty hooked okay. all right all right um, well uh, it's, it's funny it seemed like uh, there were a lot of firsts in terms of you know what uh, what happened um, in her life and I know they, they talked a great deal about advertising which I mean a lot of people take for granted I, I didn't realize that you know that she was kind of like a a, a, a at the forefront mm-hmm. in a lot of ways in advertising and, and it's also fitting that that uh, that 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 the film actually discusses you know uh, uh, equality among women because of I don't know if you've been following football but they actually had something recently with uh, uh, punting and, and having you know female punters in the league so oh, yeah kind of ironic so it's got to be a first <laughs> yeah yeah um, she What was interesting about her and one of the things that caught my eye about her story is that she was so ahead of her time. I mean, in in every way, but in advertising in particular and self-promotion, she... And that's why, to me, it's such a quintessentially American story. She was able to remake herself in her own image, and she did that by self-promotion and publicizing herself. And what's amazing is she had no precedent for it. Like, today, the concept of product placement and... Um, selling ad space on your jersey. That's been done a million times. That's not new or inventive. But back then, the fact that she was able to, you know, based on the stipulations of this wager to go around the world, she needed to raise money. And the fact that she thought to raise money by selling ad space on her body, it's pretty incredible. Because she didn't have, she didn't have like an Us magazine for (laughs) how to, you know, to observe how other people, how celebrities acted, how to get attention. She just kind of figured it out. And it, it worked. The, um, her name is Annie Kopchowski, but the Londonderry comes from her first sponsor, right. which was the Londonderry Lithia Water Company, and they offered her a couple hundred dollars um, to carry a banner, but also to put their name on her wheel, which very quickly became her pseudonym. And before long, the newspaper started calling her Annie Londonderry Kopchowski in the first few weeks of her ride. But within the first few months, they dropped Kopchowski, so she was just Annie Londonderry. And Annie Londonderry is no longer a Jewish immigrant. She's whoever she wants to be, and that's kind of why the story is so amazing, because she was able to just, as I say at the end of the film, ride the waves of her own imagination to fame, which is very American, that she could just make herself over in her own image. Right. And I mean, get away with it. Yeah, I was going to say, because it was just, it was fascinating to watch. I had a chance to see the film, and it was fascinating to watch how just something as simple as a bike was, you know, a symbol of of uh, uh, quality, something, you know, that 
that mundane is, you know, something that could be used for, you know, a greater purpose. So Yeah, it offered freedom, which was, you know, it offered not only just the freedom to ride around the world, but for, for women in general, it offered freedom to ride around their town, to go somewhere unchaperoned, which was unheard of. It was scandalous. Many doctors thought it was inappropriate for women to be riding a bike, that it would not only cause reproductive problems, but it could give them worse pleasure. And so it was a very controversial thing, but yeah, it offered, it offered them the ability also to feel how their body could produce power and how they could be the source and mode of their own transportation. Um, prior to that, the main kind of not athletic endeavor, what am I trying to say? Um, women often used the sewing machine, and that was you know the piece of equipment that they were strapped down to. But the bike really offered um, Elizabeth, Katie Stanton, I think, or now I'm forgetting. Uh, one of one of the major feminists says that. Um, the bicycle, more than anything, was kind of quintessential to women's emancipation, and it's true, because it allowed Annie and many other women to ride away from their lives, and she rode back into it, but it was it was her tool. And uh, some other woman, um, I think Frances Willard, wrote, the, she learned to ride a bike around the same time that Annie was riding, and I think that her book was called The Power Beneath My Feet, or something mm. to that effect, and it allowed women to have power which they weren't expected to have and they weren't expected to want back then. They weren't supposed to have their own dreams or aspirations for anything other than being a mom, being a wife, and doing that well. And not really, they're not supposed to do much other, many other things well. So, Awesome. Uh, well, um, outside of this project, do you have anything that's kind of in the pipelines at this point? Or are you kind of taking a break before you move on to your next project? I don't have anything in the pipeline. Anything in the pipeline at the moment. Um, I, as I said, I worked on. I don't know if I said this. I worked on this for seven years, and I finished it in uh, November. And I just had a baby in December, so I had. Two, Congratulations! Thank you. Two labors of love at the same time. So right now, I'm trying to figure out um, how to have a kid <laughs> and how to be a parent. Um, and while I'm doing that, I'm trying to also figure out the life of the afterlife of this film. So in addition to film festivals, I really want it to be a tool for kind of grassroots community screenings where people, there are so many bike clubs out there and a lot of them have social nights. And I think it's a great way for communities to come together to watch the film and talk about it. And I think it is a long life in educational institutions. So I need to get started on that and figure out how, how to navigate that world. Cool. And awesome. I more documentaries down the line, but to figure out the other stuff first. <laughs> well, awesome. Thank you. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you. <laughs>